Hello, good morning and welcome to the AM Sports with me, Ori Kwampo, for Vice President of the Ghana Football Association, says that the football governance body decision to reappoint Milovan Ryabach has been vindicated after he led the team to back-to-back -back wins over Zimbabwe. Though it is still too early uh, to be excited, he is encouraged by the output of the team. I think our mission was very simple. Um, one of some of the key criteria we looked at in trying, in looking for um, a manager for the team was to uh, was find somebody who has the pedigree, um, somebody who ha who had who can uh, reconstitute a team or restructure mm. a team. And mm. Milo came top in those categories because we, it's not a, for the lack of talent in this country. It's just a matter of organizing the team, knowing the right uh, structure to put in place and getting the right players, getting the right people around uh, the team and, and how to organize. I think if you get if you get those right and with a good managerial capability, you'll be able to, to handle the Black Stars. Then some of those areas are where I think, in my view, that we are lacking from, from the local side. But in the general scheme of things, um, I think... It's too early, mm. but I, I, I'm encouraged and, you know, I'm cautiously encouraged that we are on the right path. That's the most important thing. Well, Ghana beat Zimbabwe 1-0 yesterday in Harare to keep up with South Africa, who also uh, beat Ethiopia by one goal to nil. As things stand in Group G in the World Cup qualifiers, uh, South Africa are on 10 points and the Black Stars are on 9 points. Remember, only a team that finishes top goes to uh, the next round. And joining us via Zoom, uh, we'll be talking to Nanaj, but you can take a look at the table on your screen. And as I was saying, uh, between Ghana and South Africa, it's just one point different. In the next round, Ghana face Ethiopia away, South Africa face Zimbabwe at home. And then there will be that final tie between the Black Stars and South Africa at Cape Coast. Now let's now go to Zoom and speak to football coach and commentator Nana Ajiman. Uh, Nana, you heard what Mark Addis said uh, about encouraging, you know, uh, being encouraged uh, by the performance that he's seen by the Black Stars in the last two games. What do you make of that? Nana, I think, Nana, I think you have to unmute. I think it's very encouraging. I think the signs are very encouraging. I share the cautious optimism. Um, six points out of six, that is very, very encouraging. But I don't think um, that we've got there yet. Um, he is still trying to build a team, trying to develop a shape on the pitch, trying to develop the tactical discipline on the pitch to ensure that the players do exactly as they're told. Um, this wasn't happening previously before. The players were doing just as they liked. Now they're doing what they're told. And now we can begin to see a form of pattern being developed in the, the type of play that there is in the Black Stars. And that's certainly encouraging. I, I think if Party hadn't struck the ball the way he had, perhaps we would have come home with a draw. And so there is still an issue about who is actually going to score those goals, where those goals are actually going to come from, because they're certainly not going to come from Jordan at the moment. Loss of form, loss of confidence, it's dipped uh, tragically, and he will take a few more games domestically to pick that up. He will go back to his club, um, Crystal Palace, uh, this weekend, and probably he'll start. We'll see what, what he can do then. But his form has to pick up on the domestic stage first before that can be, you know, that can come through internationally or continentally. So we still have an issue about who is going to score the goals. We saw, I think it was uh, Tete, a yeah, useful player, but not someone I think I would hang my hat on as someone who could score the goals for us. So we still have that dilemma. Much more compact in defence, although... We are liable to make mistakes, much more compact in midfield, even though uh, Kudos sometimes hold on to the ball a bit too much and then loses possession. But these are things that can be tidied over. These are things that can be brushed up. 
so that they're, they're near perfect. So I think it's, you know, it's a good start, six out of six. Um, the key test will come against the South Africans because I think we are top of the table temporarily. I think anyone who's going to put any money on South Africa against Ethiopia in South Africa will put their money on South Africa, and I would do that too. So I would expect that South Africa would go back on top. Um, and the clash will be the final match against us, which will be a must-win affair. Um, Nana, I think, yeah, so South Africa actually played yesterday and they are currently top. They beat Ethiopia like you did rightly predict. Uh, but let me also just ask you this. When you look at the two games that Milovan took charge of, the first one we saw a more fluid team attacking, dominating the game versus the team that we saw yesterday that wasn't too sharp and were quite comfortable with the one goal lead and just wanted to see the game out. Looking at these two performances, going forward, which one do you think Milovan might be relying on going forward? Uh, is there a case that Ghanaians may have to get used to this defensive approach? Or the first game that everyone was so excited is what Milovan is probably trying to replicate? Well, I think Milovan's trademark, although he denies it, is the one goal project. We all know that from way back 2008 or 2010, wherever, whenever it was. He's famous for the one goal project. Uh, and with the one goal project comes a more solid defense, comes a more competitive midfield. And he's got to start from there, first of all, because, you know, a draw is better than a loss, by all means, by every stretch of the imagination. And so he's got to come up with a defense that is very, very solid, that communicates very well amongst themselves, that know how to work themselves out of tricky situations, that are clear that you don't hold on to the ball when you get finally get the ball in your defensive third. You get rid of it. You either pay a pass or you get rid of that ball completely to take the pressure off. So I think he's working from the back to the front. And so we will, we're likely to see more improvement in our defence and our midfield than we are in terms of scoring the goal. So for me, I think that's where we are going. We're going to be very defensive, very defensive-minded. And we will hit them on the break and we'll try our best to score the goals. It's not really, or it shouldn't really be down to one person to score the goal, but that's how we've cultured our team for some time now. Asamoah Tony Yeboah, we've always had one main person. I hope this time round that Milovan will try to spread that responsibility throughout the middle of the park as well, so that everybody can score. You know, set pieces from corners. Jonathan Mensah, we saw what he's done with his club in the USA. He's come up for the corner. He scored the winning goal. This is the type of approach we really need, where everyone can play everywhere, everyone can defend anywhere, and everyone can score a goal. That's the type of approach we need, but we can't jump into that yet until we solidify the defence and make sure that the, the midfield is very, very competitive. All right, thank you very much, Nana Juman, for making time with us this morning. Uh, still on the World Cup qualifiers and in Group G specifically, South Africa leave for Ghana after securing a hard-fought 1-0 victory over Ethiopia in the 2022 FIFA World Cup qualification Group G on Tuesday evening. Gitane Kebede's first half on goal and Bafana Bafana the victory in a match that saw the Southern African Giants create few clear-cut chances at the FNB Stadium. Welcome to Johannesburg and the FNB Stadium where there are fans coming in today. Uh, not as many to fill the stadium, but 2,000 being allowed in to watch this crucial group match in African qualifying for next year's World Cup between South Africa and Ethiopia. Now he's come for this and he's missed it! Oh, and it's as big an error for the first goal of the return match. An own goal gifts South Africa the lead. Good corner in from Yusuf Mart. It created the danger in the middle. The header was a good one forward, but that really shouldn't have been a goal. 
Emmanuel Ibubakar Nasir. In it comes, and a chance for redemption for Getana Kabeda. Lovely turn by Getana Kabeda. Just couldn't quite get the radar sorted out. And now a chance to race through here for Hong Guanye. Decent ball in! Oh, he's over the top! Oh, what a miss there by La Swallow. Golden chance to double the lead, approaching the half hour mark. Here come the South Africans once more, though, as we head towards the 10 minute mark in the second half. Is that offside as well? Another chance for Magunka. It's been cleared off the line. And then South Africa it was a good move by Mukena. Gugsa out to Azrat. And it's the attempt by Abel. That would have been quite a finish. And he knows how close it was. So then, here we go. It's not bad and it's just wide. And again, Ronwen Williams more than happy to see Abel's free kick flash over the bar. And South Africa have taken this by one goal to nil. Ethiopia are eliminated from World Cup qualifying. Well, that was South Africa there, and uh, they comfortably, you know, brushing Ethiopia aside by one goal to nil. Uh, what that result means is that they surpass Ghana back on the table, and only one team would qualify. And so let's take a look at the next round fixtures. Pretty crucial games in the next international break, as Ethiopia would be hosting Ghana, and South Africa would host Zimbabwe. Well, that's how we wrap up the sports here. My name is Oriko Kuwambo. We will bring you more details and more sports stories through our, our bulletins in the day. The AM Show continues right after this.